What's going on guys, Omnix here, and today we are continuing our beginner streamer series by taking a look at the OBS settings that I use and recommend you guys use for the newest version of OBS. Remember, this series is going to be ongoing in the future, so if you want to catch the new ones as they come out, hit subscribe below. But without further ado, we're going to take a look at the settings. Okay, so, presuming you've got OBS installed and open, it should look fairly similar to what is in front of you. If not, pause the video and check the description. I will include a link to download and install OBS below and from there you can resume the video and you'll have been caught up. If it doesn't look like this however, you can right click in the grey area to enable preview if the black box is missing and you won't have any of these sources or scenes down the bottom so don't worry about that. Heading on over to the bottom right, we've got the settings tab and that is where we're going to start. I am going to do these in order of importance for what I believe. So we're going to start with the advanced tab. So the only thing that we're going to change in here is right at the top we have process priority. You're going to set that to high by selecting the drop down. And that is us for the advanced tab. Next, we're going to jump into the video tab. And what I'm going to tell you guys is not what's on the screen, so do not copy what's on the screen. I have these settings for recording, and I have a different profile for live streaming. What you want to do in the base canvas is change this to 1600x900 and have your output scaled resolution the same, x900. You can leave it as bicubic and I have mine at 60 fps. The reason that I have it set to 1600 by 900 is that it looks better than 720p but it doesn't take up the same amount of processing power as 1080p does and for people who are not partners on Twitch this is one of the best resolutions you can use with the settings that we have available. Taking a look at the output tab next, start at the very top and make sure that your output mode is set to advanced, then make sure you're on the streaming tab and that your audio track is set to 1. For encoder, I have the new NVENC option from NVIDIA. They worked together with OBS to ensure that the encoding that was carried out by the graphics card was the best it can be. And if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, I highly recommend you use this setting. It's worked out fantastic for me and it doesn't take a lot of power away from your PC in order to stream. I do not have enforced streaming service encoder on. My rate control is set to constant bit rate. That's what CBR stands for. That just tells your computer that you want to have a steady upload to your desired platform. We're going to skip past bitrate for now and take a look at keyframe interval. Mine is set to 2. My preset is set to quality. There is one quality option above it. I tend to find that quality is good enough. My profile is set to high. I have look ahead and psycho visual tuning enabled. Both of these help when encoding on the graphics card, that's why they're enabled. My GPU is set to 0 because I've only got one graphics card on this computer and my max B frames is set to 2. Heading back up to your bitrate, in order to find out what bitrate you want, you can head to testmy.net and here you can click test my internet and then click combined. These tests will give you an idea of your download and upload speed and we'll be able to see the allowance that you have in order to live stream. So here we can see that I have a 295 download and an 18 upload. So I have a third of my upload going just to streaming. The reason that it is only 6000 is that 6000 is the highest bit rate for non-partnered streamers. Once you've got your output settings done, we can take a look at audio. Normally, OBS is pretty good at setting up your audio settings for you. So most of it can be the same. Just double check that you have your sample rate set to 44.1. Your channels are stereo, which means that it sound comes through both ears. And that your desktop and microphone are the correct ones. I'm assuming that if you're looking at streaming, then you know how 
to set up and change your microphone settings on a PC. The rest of the settings can be disabled or left as is. There's no real importance in this tab. Taking a look at the general tab, most of the stuff is preferential. I only have my source alignment snapping and multi-view enabled. Everything else I've left off with the exception of automatically checking for updates on startup. This will just keep you up to date with the newest versions of OBS. In the hotkeys tab, I have nothing. I have a handy little device called a Stream Deck, which I will feature in a video soon, but I don't use anything in the hotkeys section. If you don't have an external device that you can use, you can enable a bunch of different hotkeys using your keyboard. And the very last thing you should do is the Stream tab. Once you've got everything set up, you can head over here into the Stream tab, select whatever service you would like to stream to. There are a bunch of services available and either connect to your account or use your stream key. Some services don't allow you to connect an account and you will be forced to use the stream key, but presuming that you're streaming to Twitch, then you can go ahead, log in and authorize your account for streaming use. And that's it, it's that simple. I'd hope that across the board, that most people would have the same, if not similar settings to the ones I've shown here. If you find your computer struggling, then the first thing I would do is head into the video tab and bring down the resolution and the scaled resolution both to 1280 by 720. You won't notice a massive difference on stream, but the difference will be there in your computer's performance while live streaming. If there's anything else that you guys want me to expand on or explain in more detail, feel free to leave a comment. I know I glossed over things in the video, but I wanted to stick with the theme of the series and that the videos are kind of shorter and to the point. I do know most of the terminologies and I think I could explain things pretty well for you guys. So feel free to ask me or contact me elsewhere. I will leave different social media links in the description and you guys can find me there just about all the time. If this video was helpful, feel free to leave a like and hit subscribe. There will be more videos coming in the future for this series and more and that'll help you guys stay up to date with the latest stuff that gets put out. But for now, I've been Omnix, and I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.